So thank you very much for coming today. I'll speak on the topic of how to stop overthinking and we think about our thinking process to understand how it works. So broadly, there are two kinds of people. Some people are wise and some are otherwise. <laughs> now, with those people who are otherwise, it's not just that these are two categories. You can see we ourselves are sometimes wise. We surprise ourselves by some of the insights that we might come up with. And then sometimes we shock ourselves by some of the dumb things that we do. Does anyone have this experience of such oscillation? So now, when we act otherwise, there's one way is when we are impulsive. We, we don't think adequately. Just rush in and do things and then we regret it. But another equally problematic way, equally unwise way of acting is, one is not thinking at all and the other is thinking too much. So, <clears throat> If we consider a graph of wisdom versus time in terms of, say, how much time we invest in thinking about a problem. If we don't think about the problem at all, we will not usually act wisely. So it's the wisdom would be zero. But then as we think about it, we think about it, we get more and more clarity, get more and more wisdom. It, the graph moves up. However, it doesn't keep linearly moving up infinitely. At a particular point, it flattens out. We think and we think and nothing further comes up. And after that, it bottoms. It goes south. And then the more we think, the more confused we become. It's like, some people say, I was confused earlier. Now, I'm not so sure. That means, earlier I was confused, now I am not even sure whether I was confused or I was clear. <laughs> so, to some extent, our mind works like a fan. If, if the fan, the power that was used to make a fan go round and round, if that was used in a vehicle, the vehicle could go a long distance. But our mind goes round and round and round and round. And as it goes round and round and round, it goes nowhere. And whereas at least a fan, when it goes round and round, it cools us down. But when the mind goes round and round and round, it heats us up. It agitates us, it exasperates us, it exhausts us. So overthinking is something which we all tend to do. And at least with a fan, we could just have a power button, switch it off and the fan would stop. But there's no power button like that for the mind. So how do we deal with overthinking? I'll start first by explaining a model of the mind and the self based on the yoga text, the Bhagavad Gita. And then I will talk about four strategies for stopping overthinking. So this model is basically three level. The Bhagavad Gita and the yoga texts explain that our existence is three dimensional. Body, mind and soul. That's something similar to a phone or a computer where there's the hardware, there's the software and the user. The body is like the hardware, the mind, the software and we, the consciousness, the spiritual side of us that is the user. Now suppose mm, you've got a phone which is locked. Not just locked to a particular carrier, but locked in such a way that the administrator, you are not the administrator. And there are many apps over there. And in those apps, many notifications keep coming up. And most of those notifications are not relevant for you. But still they keep coming up. Now, just because some notification has come up on your phone doesn't necessarily mean you have to take notice of it. Getting a notification is something outside our control. It just comes by the mechanism 
by the software arrangement of the phone am i audible to you you would like to come ahead yeah, yeah, what is the sound let us know if this sound is good Is this better? Want to increase it further? Better now? Okay. Where is that sound coming from? You want to close the door? It won't make much difference. Air conditioning. Yeah. Air conditioning. Okay, fine. Yeah. Is it better now? Or not still? Sorry. Okay, I bring this closer to my mouth. Okay. You know we are vegetarians, so we won't eat you if you come closer. <laughs> okay, that's good. So this model of the self is talking about that there are notifications which come often without our control, but just because a notification has come doesn't necessarily mean we have to take notice of it. So taking notice is an act of choice from our our side. Getting a notification is sometimes not within our choice. So similarly, our mind is in many ways like a locked software, where certain notifications keep coming within it, and those notifications don't necessarily have to be noticed by us. I would like to ask you a question about thoughts. Uh, do you think that thoughts are powerful, or do you think that thoughts are powerless? Powerful. How many of you think thoughts are powerful? Powerful. Okay. Does anyone think that thoughts are powerless? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So now I'll explain how thoughts are both. at one level every thought is like a notification coming within our mind and the thought is powerless till we give it our attention it is a notification that is there now some notification may require to be noticed some notification might just be random so to the extent we focus our thought on something then it gains power it gets momentum from thought comes emotion from emotion comes intention from intention comes action from action comes habit from habit comes character from character comes destiny so thoughts are enormously powerful in the sense that our thoughts can shape our destiny but a thought in itself is powerless so you could say a thought can have enormous potential power but at one level thoughts are just notifications coming on our mind in the software so for example now so many thoughts come up oh today it's colder than yesterday okay now if i need to wear some warmer clothes that's fine otherwise okay it's it's okay it's over you notice it sometimes you know, might get some notification of something that has happened in some part of the world which is nothing to do with it so like that our mind keeps giving us a lot of notifications so thoughts are in themselves nothing but strings of character on our inner screen that is the mind or you could say they are series of images now if we pay attention to them that's when they grow I'll explain this in another way. So, if somebody says to you, "You are a fool. You are never going to do anything worthwhile in your life." Now, 
if we respect that person or we regard that person as authority and if they say it that just comes in our mind and it stays over there and we keep thinking about it keep thinking about it and it starts discouraging us disempowering us and it might make us sink into depression on the other hand somebody else says something and yeah this person is always critical so i won't pay attention to them and we just move on so that the sound vibration came in but depending on how seriously we took that sound vibration uh, it will have that much impact on us so our mind is also like that so when the mind starts chattering about something oh, why is it like this why is this person like this why are things going in this way it's chatter and to the extent we give it attention to that extent it grows and grows in power so this is the model of the self the model is that we are not our thoughts we are the thinkers of our thoughts and not just the thinkers of our thoughts we are also the choosers of the thoughts that we think about and we use this even in common parlance when we say we use the word thought in two different senses one is i just got a thought and the other is i have given this a lot of thought when i say i just got a thought that's like a notification popped up on my inner screen on my mind and i have given this a lot of thought that means i have analyzed this and i have come to some good understanding about this so thought can refer to notification that pops up thought can also refer to the notice that we give to it now with this understanding that we and the thoughts within us are different thoughts are depending on if we are verbal thinkers we can think of thoughts as series of characters strings of characters or if we are more visual thinkers you can think of thoughts as a series of images it just comes within us on the inner screen it's like a notification so with this model so some notification will just keep coming we can't stop them from coming but we can stop ourselves from noticing them and how to do that that will be the remaining part of my talk any questions or comments till now okay thank you so i'll speak four principles first is attribute attribute means that attribute the thought to your mind instead of when you start feeling i am feeling bored just the mind is saying i am feeling bored attribute the thoughts that come to you especially the thoughts that tend to distract you the thought that you uh, tend to overthink about just attribute them to the mind i am worried about whether i will be able to clear this exam or not the mind is saying i am worried whether i'll clear this exam or not i'm scared about the state of the environment the mind is saying i'm scared about the state of the environment now how what happens as soon as we attribute the thought to the mind is that it creates a distance say if somebody comes to you and says to you they might be a close friend they say i am depressed now when they say that you hear them but you don't just immediately you become depressed by that okay you are depressed let's 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 discuss what happened what is going on so we need to create a certain amount of distance between us and our thoughts so it's like say this is my phone now and this is the sound system maybe it was this my sound system now you ask me among these among this you know this phone and this mic uh, this loud speaker which one of them is you well i am neither of them i am they are they are objects and i am the subject who is observing both these things so just as we are the just as we are the subjects observing objects in the outer world 
we are also the subjects observing our thoughts i am feeling lonely the mind is saying i am feeling lonely so so i am feeling lonely is a thought over there so as soon as we can create this distance by attribution then the thought loses its control over us otherwise the thought can completely overwhelm us now one way to do this attribute uh, to this attribution is through articulation sometimes when the thoughts come you might not be able to think like that but just articulate it that the mind is saying i am feeling lonely you don't have to speak it loudly you speak it softly the mind is saying i am feeling lonely now what happens when we articulate it articulation requires some intelligence and as soon as the intelligence gets activated then the thoughts spell over us breaks breaks the thoughts can cast a spell over us and once they cast a spell over us we stop thinking clearly so as soon as we try to articulate our situation what happens is our intelligence starts functioning we may think that we speak to express ourselves that is true but we don't speak just to express ourselves we also speak to discover ourselves that means we speak to sometimes speak to express our thoughts and sometimes we speak to discover our thoughts so when we speak we start we, when we try to articulate our thoughts that's why we start that's when we start understanding what am i thinking so if somebody came to you and said oh i am depressed okay what's wrong what happened and then they have to say what happened and expressing that requires intelligence so the i'll talk about four a's to stop overthinking what is the first a attribute attribute your thoughts to to your mind and one way to do it is by articulating so we become observers not just of the world but observers of our thoughts also and second a is analyze analyze means that analyze what what is the value of that thought suppose somebody was sitting at night with a glum with a very som- somber face in deep thought and they awake late into the night we ask them what are you thinking about i am thinking whether the sun should rise tomorrow or not <laughs> what <laughs> oh you are thinking is not going to make any difference <laughs> the sun is going to rise anyway now when we phrase it in such stark terms it seems absurd why would anyone waste their time thinking about whether the sun should rise it's so clearly out of our control but actually we spend so much time thinking about things over which we have no control so if we love a sports team and that sports team has a big match coming up you may be interested in the match but who will win who will win who will win who will win well you are thinking of who is going to win is not going to determine who is going to win that's just one example but there are so many things like that so in analysis for analyzing i'll use another acronym called din no oh, then somebody makes a big din big loud clamorous noise so when we analyze a thought the thought is arising from some situation and din is that in that situation what is what is it that i can do about it basically any problem that we face in our life about which we tend to overthink it falls in three categories direct control indirect control no control that's din the mind makes a big din of things so direct control indirect control no control so now whether the sun should rise or not that falls in which category no control no control now okay 
I'm just going to graduate and I'm I I'm, I want a job, but the economy is going into recession and I may not get a job. That's if I start thinking like that. What is what category is that? If the economy goes into recession, no control. Now what I could do is maybe I make sure that I do my project well, I do my studies well, I try to get the best grades, the best experience. That is in my control. So usually, uh, thoughts obs- when when thoughts start overwhelming us, when we are overthinking, we lose this segregation of what is in our control. Now, direct control means that something which we can ourselves do. I have this exam. If I don't get a job after passing this exam, what will happen? Oh, okay, that's not in my control. What is in my control is direct control is. I can study well. I can prepare well. Indirect control might be that you no, know, I if I want some recommendations from my professors or some guides, then I try to behave as well as possible with them so that they may recommend me. So there are some situations over which we have control, and there are many over which we have no control. And the mental chatter is usually. about things over which we have no control and in that process with our energy getting completely con- consumed by that we are not able to use our energy for that which is in our control now why does this mind tend to chatter like this so we are talking about analyze we want to categorize uh, what kind of thought it is but if we go further deeper why does the mind go on a chatter like this sometimes it is just because of excessive energy it's like if a tea kettle is boiling then what happens there is so much heat energy in it so much steam that it has to whistle the whistle has to come out so like that suppose you are upset with someone and you've decided you're going to tell them off you're going to going to give them a piece of your mind now even before you meet them maybe 50 times you tell them off in your mind <laughs> <laughs> so in trying to give others a piece of our mind we lose our peace of mind <laughs> in trying to give others a piece of our mind we lose our peace of mind so here what's happening is there's a lot of energy which is boiling in it here the energy could be energy of anger energy could be of irritation disappointment betrayal whatever it is but that energy is pent up within us so now when we understand okay so right now what can i do about it well i'm going to meet them in a week i'll talk with them at that time right now no control so put it aside much of the overthinking can be stopped if we can just categorize does this fall in my direct control indirect control or no control direct control let me seriously think about this and let me see what i can do about it indirect control okay there's not much i can do a no control okay i just need to accept it now acceptance might seem disempowering but actually it's empowering why because when we accept that which is unchangeable we free our our energy to change what is changeable we all have finite energies so that's the second part uh, what was this second strategy for stopping overthinking analyze yeah thank you so i'll go to third one now now these are not necessarily linear the third is anchor anchor means that suppose we are in the ocean and suddenly a monster wave comes and hits us now we might be very strong but we can't fight against the wave we will just be swept away by the wave so similarly for us sometimes our thoughts emotions fears they come like stormy waves and they just sweep us away trying to stop it's almost impossible 
so at that time the solution is to get an anchor if there is an anchor if we can be swept away by a wave then if we can hold on to something stronger then whatever energy we would use for stopping the wave and it wouldn't work it will work if we can hold on to that anchor i gave this talk in australia and I, the, after the talk one sri lankan person came and met me and he told me that in 2004 there was a giant tsunami that hit the indian subcontinent and he was on the beaches of sri lanka at that time and he saw this huge wave coming and he turned and ran and ran desperately he could see the wave just thundering toward him and then he just saw in front a big tree with a branch and the wave just came and hit him and somehow the wave hurled him toward the branch and he caught the branch and within moments it said the land around him turned into the ocean is holding on to the branch and the what was just flowing 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 so he pulled himself and got on and hold kept holding on to the branch and after some time the water went down and he was rescued now if he hadn't held on to the branch he would been hurled by the water and crashed into something he would have been dead so that was the anchor now all of us need anchors now what can be our anchors if you consider two circles see, there are th- certain things which we like to do and certain things which are good for us if those two circles were identical life would be wonderful <laughs> is it <laughs> now those two circles are not entirely disjointed if among the things that are we like to do and the things that are good for us if we can find some intersection the things that fall in that intersection can be our anchors because when a particular thought wave is sweeping over us if we are to do something which we don't like to do and the force of this emotion the thought and emotion will be too strong for us to resist but something that we like to do then we can resist it so some of you you may like music now there are different kinds of music some music uh, pacifies the mind some some music explodes the mind so in this case we may want the music that calms our mind so we are a part of a bhakti yoga tradition as you know there is a bhakti yoga club so the bhakti yoga tradition is rich with music there's lots of enriching spiritual music and if that's what if music we like we find the music that is also uplifting for us that is strengthening for us and hold on to that if you like to read and you are stimulated by wisdom thoughts then find some wisdom quotes read some wisdom text find some wisdom quotes from there and keep those readily accessible maybe in a notepad on your phone or in a diary and whenever you start getting agitated just look at them read them dwell on them one of my favorite thoughts about worry is that worry is like the interest we pay on loans we haven't yet taken <laughs> most of the problems are not there and still we are worrying about them so we need our anchors meditation is also a very powerful anchor meditation is not just about sitting in a particular posture or just regulating our breath and yeah, those are important parts of meditation but the essential point of meditation is to shift our focus from that which is changing to that which is unchanging from the ever flickering outer world to the unchanging core in our inner world in our tradition we do mantra chanting and mantras are one way to lead the consciousness inward mantras are spiritual empowered spiritual sounds and they can lead our consciousness inward from the un- from the changing to the unchanging 
so we all need to find our anchors and if you try to tell them my oh, god don't don't over think this that doesn't work the best way to deal with an overthinking mind is not pause or stop but redirect see the mental energy is very different from physical energy say so if i touch this and there's an electric current going through this maybe some defect then i can decide okay i'm not going to touch this so with respect to physical objects we can decide i'm not going to touch this and will not touch it but with respect to thoughts we can't do like that if i tell you if we decide i'm not going to think about this the just in thinking i am not going to think about this our thought energy has already gone and touched it so in that we already thought about it so suppose i tell all of you for the next 30 seconds please don't think of a pink monkey except for a pink monkey you can think of whatever you want just no pink monkey for the next 30 seconds now what happened yeah in your whole life you may have never thought of a pink monkey but as soon as you think monkey i how did the monkey become pink was it genetically mutated or did it fall in pink paint or is that pink monkey a pet of some woman who loves pink what happened so our thoughts are just going away there so we can't not think of things that's why when we are overthinking just stop thinking about this it doesn't work is like to stop stop the waves stop and our our speech is not going to stop the waves but we can hold on to an anchor so that is the third point anchor and the last point is act act means that i talked about three levels physical mental and spiritual to some extent when i talked about attribute analyze it's like we place ourselves outside our mind and i am the observer of the mind so we rise to the spiritual level but then another way to get out of the mind one way to get out of the mind is to go above the mind that is at the spiritual level another way to get out of the mind is to go below the mind that is at the physical level that means if we start doing something physically practically especially something that requires our attention then immediately the mind gets over then we get distracted from that overthinking so psychologists have found that when people worry people overthink people worry no is there a time when they worry is it like say do people have evening 7 to 7:30 is my daily worry time does anyone have like that no usually we worry the most during our leisure time when we don't when we are not engaged in anything constructive so during our idle time our mind works overtime during our idle time our mind works overtime so now that doesn't mean that we have to be always busy but we always have to be purposeful engaged So just get out of your head. And when you're overloaded, just go for a walk, do some exercise, you know, talk with someone, or not just do something random, but do something valuable. Do something which is important for you. You say, "Oh, but my mind is troubling me so much. I can't do anything. I'm irritated, exhausted, exasperated. I can't do anything." this is my concluding point that in this so the mind overpowers us by making us believe that we are powerless you just can't do anything about this now it's true that there are many things about which we can do nothing but there is one thing about which we can always do something and that is what we think about how we look at the situation so act means if the mind says that oh, you know the economy is so down or say if you are in a class and 
your teacher is your professor is very very strict and he just want to fail everyone he say no matter what i study i'm going to fail or whatever you can have any kind of negative thoughts which may go overthink so you could just at that time turn flip the mind around you know in judo when and you have as like use the strength of the opponent against the opponent so similarly when the mind says this situation is so terrible you just can't do anything about it then ask yourself can i make the situation worse what it's already terrible terrible who wants to make it worse mm -hmm. now we don't want to make it worse but can we make it worse no matter how bad a situation is we never lose the power to make it worse <laughs> i might get uh, i might get in a car, car crash and my leg may get fractured and i am on the bed for the next 6 weeks and i say i'm powerless i can't do anything but still i can take a hammer and crack my other knee <laughs> no no obviously nobody would be so stupid as to do that but what we would never do at the physical level we do at the mental level yeah the situation is bad but we just keep thinking negative 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 and we are making the situation worse we some people fall sick and then they become so grumpy so irritable that they are sick and they make their caregivers sick of them <laughs> so this is a critical point to understand that no matter how bad a situation is we can always make it worse and if we have the power to make it worse that means we have the power to make it better also so act in a way that is purposeful act in a way that can make the situation better now we may say will it make a difference well it may not make a difference in the outer world but it can make a difference for ourselves so we start acting just do what you can and all of us if you just sat down and thought you can probably within 5 minutes think of three doable things which if you start doing it can make your life better and you can think of three doable things which if you stop doing your life won't become worse and just start it act and once we start acting the mind's spell breaks and then all that overthinking that is going on it slowly comes to a halt i earlier started by comparing the mind to a fan which keeps going round and round and round and i said there is no power button to turn the mind then this fan off but there is although there is no power button to turn the fan off we can actually turn the fan off by turning our attention to something else that is worthwhile i started i said earlier that thoughts are in themselves powerless it is our invest our attention that make gives them power and as soon as we give our attention to something else their power decreases but this doesn't mean by any means that the problem will go away the problem may still be there but the problems hold on us Will decrease. Life determines our problems. Our mind determines the size of those problems. The problems don't come with a physical size. Their size is determined by how much they hold on to us. And if we start directing our thoughts elsewhere, action, direct our thoughts elsewhere by doing tangible action with respect to something valuable. and you can do it very simply it's just two small things okay for the next one hour can i make sure that i don't speak in a way that i'll regret i won't snap at anyone i won't uh, speak rudely to anyone okay next one hour yeah i think i can do it if you do that for the next one hour you might be in situation where all your relationships are going downhill but just like the next one hour i'll speak in a polite way 
You do that, you see, you can do it. Oh. Then, appreciate yourself. Not in the egoistic sense, but in the kind sense. Yeah, good job. Now, see, you, you thought that everything is just lousy, but you could be able to do this for one hour. Now, try for one more hour. And that way, what we do is, we slowly make changes. In the inner world, the process of change is evolutionary. But the product of that change is revolutionary. Once we learn to manage our thoughts better, we'll find that we have so much more thought energy available for doing so many constructive things in our life. It's almost like we'll become a new me who is far more resourceful, far more effective, and ultimately far better. That's how each one of us can transform ourselves. I'll summarize. I spoke on this topic of how to stop overthinking. I started by how we are sometimes wise and sometimes otherwise. One way we are otherwise is by aiming impulsive and other is by overthinking. So our mind is like a fan which keeps moving round and round and it heats us up. So if we considered why wisdom versus time invested in thinking about a problem, the graph goes up, flattens and then goes down. So we need to be in that zone where it is at the peak. We need to think adequately. Today we focused on how to stop overthinking. So I gave a model of the self that is a three level model. Body, mind and soul is like the Hardware, software and user. So our thoughts are like notifications coming on our phone. Not every notification deserves <coughs> to be noticed. So when we overthink, what happens is a thought, thought themselves are intrinsically powerless. They are like a string of letters or a series of images on our mind screen. But when we give them attention, grow enormously. Thought can grow into emotion, intention, action, habit, character, destiny. So now, if we don't take notice, they don't have much power. So how can we stop take, uh, stop giving undue attention to thoughts? Talk about four strategies. Anyone remember the first? Attribute. I am feeling lonely. The mind is saying, I am feeling lonely. Just distance yourself from it. Just as we are the observers of physical objects, similarly we can become the observers of our thoughts. And the second was analyze. So analyze into three categories. When our, when our thoughts are related with some problem that we tend to overthink, what was the three categories? Right. Din. Din it was din. What is it? Direct control. Indirect, Indirect control, control. No. no control. So when we analyze like this, then we can get a direction for channeling our energies. And then third A was anchor. anchor. So when the thoughts come like waves, sometimes we feel, I just can't analyze, they overwhelm me. So then we need anchor. Anchors are basically some things that exist at the intersection of things that are good for us and things that are uh, things that we like. So, it says the person caught in the tsunami caught hold of a branch. So we have to, we have to have our anchors ready. Some wisdom code, some music, some habit of meditation, whatever. That will be our anchor. Last A was act. So I said that when we are getting caught in the mind, one way is to rise up, and attribute, analyze. Hmm? But another way is to get down. So as soon as we get involved in something physical, tangible that requires our attention, the fan of the mind is going round and round, it loses the power. Its power comes from our attention. So act means we, when the mind overpowers us by making us believe that we are powerless. So we counter it by saying, do I have the power to make things worse? If yes, then I have the power to make things better. And then just take small steps. Do what is doable. And the change will be evolutionary, but the result will be revolutionary. 
Even if the problem remains, the hold of the problem on us will reduce. And we will discover that we have much more thought energy available for become for doing better things and becoming better beings. Thank you very much. <laughs> so any questions or comments? Yes, please. Um, so if we are faced with, uh, I guess, a choice between two um, actions that are like direct, like in our control, and we're kind of just bouncing back and forth like the fan kind of thing between the two, um, I guess, how do you like, Anchor yourself. Okay. That's a good question. Say, if you have a situation which is in between the direct and indirect control, say if you are in a relationship issue, there's something which we need to improve, but there's something the other person we want to influence them so that they improve. That's that's we are oscillating between the two. So one way to avoid the oscillation between these two is to remind ourselves of what we are doing well. That means Say, if somebody is yelling at us, then at that time, if we try to persuade them or we try to yell back, that is only going to make things worse. So, at that time, maybe the best thing is, I just restrain myself. I stay calm. Yes, now, the way they are behaving is also not reasonable. But this is not the time to do that. This is the time for direct control. Let me just make sure that I don't speak anything which makes things worse. Now, once you do that, what happens is at least the explosion doesn't go further at that time. And then later on, when they also calm down, then maybe we talk with them. And then we clarify, we explain. So, basically, if we just, rather than just oscillating uncontrollably between direct and indirect control, we, we identify what am I doing right now? See, life is like a tennis match. In a tennis match, sometimes you are serving. So when you are serving, the control is much more with you. Whether you will serve into the body, on the forehand, on the backhand, where. But when you are returning, all that you, you can do is just put the racket in the way of the ball and get the ball back into play. You might be good in the forehand, but if the Ball comes in the backhand, that's where you have to play. So if a player who is returning expects the freedom of serving at that time, say, my forehand is good, I'll play from the forehand. Well, the ball comes on the backhand, you will just hit air. So now, when you talk in terms of tennis like this, it becomes very clear. This is the time you're serving. This, you take initiative now. This is the time when you're returning. You just play the ball when it comes. But life is also like that. So you, if we analyze it like this, you know, that this is a situation when I have to serve, I have to take initiative, I have to do things. That's direct control situations. When, when it's indirect control, at that time also we have control, but we just have to deal with the situation as it comes. So for example, now in this talk. Now when I was giving the talk, it is direct control for me. I chose what I was going to speak. But now, when the QA session comes, it's indirect control. It's I'm returning at this time. Whichever question comes, I'm trying to answer that. So similarly for all of us, we need to identify where am I right now? And we have to be on both. Actually, with in, sometimes even in one situation itself, for dealing with some, one situation, some aspects are direct control, some indirect control, some no control. So if we just identify where we are at a particular time, then that helps us to focus our effort on that thing at that time. The, the oscillation happens when we are in a direct control situation and we try to go into indirect control at that time. Or when we are in an indirect control situation and we go into direct control at that time. It doesn't work. So identify the situation and then focus your energy on that. Then the oscillation can decrease. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Would you recommend using a person for anchor? Can a person help for anchor? Definitely. It's a, especially if we can have that close a friend or a mentor, then uh, 
it's one of the best ways to deal with the mind is to get a perspective different from what the mind is offering us all our inner thought work it's not so easy the mind just overwhelms us but when we can speak to someone else and then they they hear reflectively not judgmentally that's also important whom you are talking with so what we want is i am here my mind is here ideally would be that if i had some friend or guide who is closer to me whom i trust as much as my mind or more than my mind then what will happen is that okay the mind is saying like this and this friend is saying like this which makes more sense but normally for us most people are like this we see them through our mind whenever anyone speaks very sweetly with us immediately our mind says what does this person want <laughs> why are they speaking so sweetly with me is it it now it may be that they want something it may be just they are they just nice people we don't know but we we see everyone through the filter of the mind so if we can find someone with whom we can bond well enough and not just bond well enough it has also that person also has to be a good influence on us that person has to be at least as wise as us or wiser than us that's where mm, in spiritual circles there is a concept of a spiritual teacher or a guru mm, the whole idea is that that is a person who who understands our mind and who helps us to understand our mind sometimes i feel that that's nonsense well that's not a very understanding attitude to it to understand why am i thinking like this and then so they understand our mind they understand why they thinking like this and they help us to understand our mind that means they help us understand yeah you are thinking like this but actually you know this is not like this this is like this so if we can have a friend if we can have somebody like that that's good uh, but if we don't have then we need to also develop our inner resources we don't want to be over dependent on anyone if our capacity to manage our mind is entirely dependent on somebody else then if they are not available then our mind will make a mince meat out of us so we can have others as resources but ultimately the responsibility is ours okay thank you yes please okay what is the interaction between thoughts and emotions and which is more powerful you could see these as linear and you could see these as parallel i'll explain both ways uh, at uh, it also depends on what you mean by the word uh, if we say simply as take of thought as sim- simply a uh, stimulus occurring in our inner world it's like a notification on our screen so in that case in that sense thought is the beginning of everything so here we not using thought in the sense of, thought can also be used to say i have given this a lot of thought that is reasoning ability but thought means simply a stimulus pops up on our inner screen on our mind now suppose a thought pops up hey that movie was released yesterday let's watch it tonight now that is a thought and now hey now we respond to it hey that's a great idea we can have a lot of fun that's that's nice so then what has happened in relation to thought with the relationship that with in relationship with the thought an emotion is developed and the thought goes so from the thought emotion comes based on our investment of our thinking our attention to it then or it might be opposite you know, hey i watched that movie uh, by that same actor as dumb i'm not going to waste my time that's annoyance or aversion but it's again an emotion so basically thought as it grows it becomes an emotion and which is more powerful generally emotion is much more powerful than thought it's like a snowball i had i had gone to calgary to give a talk 
and we were running, I was one university which was on top of a hill. I had a snowing at that time, so we could see snowballs coming down. So at the top, they are not snowballs, they are snow pebbles. And you could just flip your toe against them and they'll crack. But as they keep rolling down, 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 they gain mass and momentum. And then at the bottom of the hill, they are not snowballs, they are snow boulders. They can knock over a, the same person who could have cracked them apart at the top of the hill. So thought at the top of the mountain is like a snow pebble. As it grows down, down, goes down, it grows. It becomes like emotion. Then beyond emotion, it becomes intention. I like it, I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'll go and watch the movie. So that's that's a, one more stage further. So this is where we are seeing it as sequential, linear. So from thought comes emotion. But we also use the word thought and emotion in two different senses. That some people are more rational and some people are more emotional. So rational people, they primarily analyze. Their mode of knowing is through analyzing. Emotional people, their primary mode of knowing is through feeling. Now, in this case, it's not that those who are thought, those who are rational don't feel, and it's not that those who are, those who are emotional don't analyze. But what comes first? So if that is the basic psychological type of a person, then as soon as something impinges on their inner screen, some something appears on the inner screen, first they feel about it. So in that sense, emotion might come first, come very quickly for some people. So thought in the sense of uh, an event in the inner screen, that is always the beginning. But when that uh, in, uh, stimulus on the inner screen comes up, the first response for some people might be reasoning. So that thought, you do thought about it. You think about it. You analyze it. You reason it. For it. But other is you feel with it. So that will be variable. So if you consider in that sense, some people are rational and some people are emotional. So in that case, you can say thought and reason, they are two parallel tracks. And for, for effective working, we need both. We need to be able to reason and we need to be able to feel. That's how we connect with people, we connect with things, we connect with causes. And for some people, one might be primary and the second might be secondary. But in the integrated human being, both are both are functional. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Yes, You mentioned that it's important to have makers. Um, what if you have anchors or have had anchors, but for a period of your life, for some reason, none of them work? Like you have a quote, but you look at it and it doesn't help you in the same way that it used to. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so if we have had anchors and they don't work for us, yes, it's like in one sense in our inner world it's like a war going on and i might be very good at fighting with swords but if my enemy is attacking with arrows or guns my swords are useless at that so that's why we need not just a weapon we need an arsenal of weapons and that's why we may need many anchors and we find something that works and there are some situations where nothing works then you just get swept away. But when that happens, it's if we consider the graph of our emotions or desires or cravings or worries versus time, if you consider the graph again, it's not that we keep worrying constantly at a peak about everything. It's not that we keep craving about something constantly. Yes, we might have some worry or craving, but there are surges. There are phases when they just overwhelm us. And sometimes we define ourselves by that. That, oh, at that time, I did, I resolved, I will not, I will never do it, and I did that. So when the surges come, it might just be impossible to resist, resist them. Even if we can't resist the surge, surges, we can persist between the surges. Okay, this came, at that time I did something dumb, but now it's normal. Now I don't have to beat myself up. Now let me, let me do the best that I can. Let me try to strengthen myself. And then next time the surge comes, maybe I'll be strong enough to resist it. Maybe not. But at least in between, I'll be acting positively. Sometimes what happens? Because we are defeated by the power of the surge at that time, 
After that, we keep beating ourselves up. You stupid. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Well, it's over now. What's done is done. Now, to fight a battle that is already lost is to be lost. Okay, that battle is over. But that doesn't mean the end of life. No, no failure is final. Life goes on. So persist between the urges and gradually that will make us stronger and for persisting between the urges it's always helpful to know that we are not just victims of our urges when the urges come and they just like a big surge it's when they come we don't have control but in between we do have control. So what happens is that our mind plays a dangerous double role. If suppose you are living a normal law-abiding life and a friend comes and says, oh, you want to make some quick money? Yeah, sure. You know, let's rob a bank. What? <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, 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 I've got a foolproof plan. We'll rob a bank and we'll flee and we'll be rich. No, stupid. I don't want to do this. But somehow, a friend persuades and prevails over us. And then we go and we rob the bank. And then as we are robbing, alarm rings and the police swoop in. And the friend runs away and we are caught. <coughs> angry, with, angry like anything with that person. And then we are arrested and then we are brought in court. And then we find sitting on the judge's place is that very friend. You rascal, you made me do this and now you are going to judge me. How dare you? If somebody did like this, we would be outraged. But that is what our mind does. Say, what our mind does is, first, it makes us do something stupid. Say, we decide, I am going to wake up at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. And then we wake up, the alarm rings, and the mind says, sleep for 15 minutes. And we go to sleep and then we wake up, it's two hours later. And the same mind says, you fool, why did you have to sleep for 15 minutes? You are lazy, you are useless, you will never do anything worthwhile in your life. So it's first, the mind only makes us do wrong and then it beats us up for doing wrong. So even if we can't control, when the first the mind prompts us, sleep and maybe we, we succumb to it. Okay, but after that, don't let it beat you down. Okay, it's happened. It's happened. Now, even if I can't resist the urge, let me persist between the urge. And if at least at that time you connect with the anchors, do something which strengthens you, then you'll be better equipped to face the future urges. Okay? Thank you. One last question. Anyone? Okay. Yeah? Another person's uh, opinion, can you, would that be indirect control or no control? No, wait. Another person's opinion about our situation or what exactly? About us. So, we want to change their opinion or what do we, what, what is the control over here? Like, um, they say it. Like, they say it. In lack of a better term, is it possible to change someone's opinion? opinion? Okay. Is it possible to change someone's opinion about us? It depends. It depends on various factors. See, what we can change is maybe how we behave or how we present our side of the story. And that is what is in our control. But ultimately, how they respond to it is not in our control. Like I saw a cartoon where two people are quarreling. And one person says, whatever you say, I disagree with you. <laughs> so some people just dislike us. And you, you can't do anything about it. Uh, we might climb the Mount Everest. And they will say, you took too much time. They will find something faulty with us. So in general, we shouldn't overvalue those who devalue us. And we should value those who value us. If some people consistently have a negative opinion about us and they keep devaluing us, minimizing what we are doing, then don't overvalue their opinion. 
that is that's the way you think you have the right to think about that that I, i don't i don't bother now, what you think of me is none of my business you can't say this to everyone i mean not even want to say it to that person but that's how we have to we have to have that attitude with some people these people are different and we can never earn some people's uh, uh, sub appreciation there are different kinds of addictions there is drug addiction there is alcohol addiction but there are subtler addictions also and one such subtle addiction subtler addiction is approval addiction is sometimes addicted to getting the approval of someone and with some people we may never get it now, now having said this this doesn't mean we don't try to improve ourselves there are definitely possibilities when if we try to behave better if we try to speak better act better then maybe their opinion about us can change but that is our presenting ourselves better in a better way acting in a better way is direct control maybe by that they get influence and they change that's in direct control but if they don't change that's no control so we have to see and base we have to see specifically and act appropriately sounds your question So thank you very much for your attention and participation. Thank you.